Beautiful Fredericton, St. John River. Nice place for an interview. Got two women here. And what's your name? Hi, Charles. My name is uh, Isabel Haynes. I'm from Bathurst, New Brunswick. And uh, my son Daniel Haynes was killed in a 15 passenger van in 2008, coming home from a basketball team from Moncton. Yeah, it was quite a. I remember that very well. January 2008. And uh, it was, it was sad. So we had an inquest since then, and we made some roads. And well, one of the recommendations was to ban 15 pasture vans across Canada. And um, in 2010, uh, Yvonne Godin, he introduced a bill in Ottawa to ban the 15 pasture vans, and from there, it it went to uh, like uh, John Baird, Minister John Baird at the time, and he um, uh, did a, um, he, he started a 15 pasture van safety review, and from there we met Minister uh, Chuck Strahl in September in Halifax, and uh, we requested the, uh, uh, a few things like... Um, we'll get to that in one second, we'll okay. get to that in one okay. second, we'll so then, no, no, I'm not okay. you my whole no, 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 but that's, that's okay. <laughs> okay. But you usually had another partner, weren't you? And then, okay, now you got you have somebody here. Yes, I do. And what's your name? Hi, my name is Stella Gurr, and I'm from Nanaimo, British Columbia, on uh, Vancouver Island. And I lost my son uh, the same year, eight months after the Bathurst tragedy. Uh, Michael, who was only 26 years old, oh. died in a single vehicle van rollover outside of Brandon, Manitoba. I knew about the Bathurst tragedy and it just, I was, you know, it just went to my heart. I, I couldn't imagine any family going through something like that and yet eight months later I was in the same position and asking the same questions and wanting answers. Uh, the following summer in 2009, I contacted Isabel Haynes. Uh, but I had already started uh, a letter campaign to Transport Canada to ban the 15 passenger vans. Uh, Did you go do it in British Columbia first? Uh, yes. Did they do it? No. No? No. No. Uh, basically nothing happened and so I, I was sort of, I was in the same, uh, and I knew that uh, I also I wanted to connect with Isabel because I knew she would know exactly how I felt. And when we met, uh, we it was only over the phone, but there was an instant bond because we shared the common beliefs uh, that the 15 passenger vans were very dangerous and should not be on Canadian roads. Now, okay, so you, you're right. You have something in common, which I don't, I don't, I can't comprehend what you're going through because I got no kids. But ever since 08 and your tragedy, a big accident happened in Ontario last year. 10 people died. Uh, the Peruvians in Homestead, Ontario. Yeah, the same yeah, man, right? Yeah. Yes, the agriculture workers, yeah. What's the latest in Ontario? Do you know? Did they, after that accident, did they have an inquest or, no. you know? I'm not sure about that. Not sure. No. Okay, so which province in Canada have banned these debt traps? Well, the first province was yeah. Nova Scotia in 1996. And then after our boys, it was in, uh, in uh, January, February of 2009, and, and uh, Quebec took the initiative to ban them in Quebec. Oh, they did? First, yes. For Les Québécois? Oh, yeah, okay. For transporting okay. students for after-school activities. Okay. And the rest of the province didn't follow suit yet. New Brunswick? Yeah, New Brunswick did. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so we're trying to get the provincial government in each province to ban their own in their own province, but then now we're going federal. You, went, you met with the federal minister last night or yesterday? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday? Because today now is uh, Friday, right? What do you got to say about that? Right. Well, on Wednesday, the, we met with the minister because uh, 
uh, over the last two years, we've been uh, correspond. Uh, we had a liaison person uh, who's quite high up in the federal uh, Department of Transport Canada, and uh, we've been uh, having uh, conference calls with him every month. And he's been keeping us updated and uh, educating us on the acts and regulations and standards and of um, different vehicles and. Um, we knew that the ministers were meeting here in Fredericton this year, so we had written a letter to Denis LaBelle requesting a meeting. And uh, we had our meeting on Wednesday at 5 o'clock, and he took the time from his meeting to come and meet with us. The last time they had a meeting like that was in Halifax, no? Yes, it was in Halifax, and then it was uh, Minister Chuck Straw. You find a the difference time. between the ministers? No, I, they were very, very uh, respectful and sensitive to our feelings and uh, okay so you met him mm -hmm. here sorry yes. go ahead okay and uh, one of the questions we asked was about the uh, the national approach which one of the the um, uh, from the Canadian Council Motor Transport Administrators uh, uh, findings and recommendations that was presented to the uh, ministers uh, uh, from uh, to the provinces and the territories for their feedback, and also that um, Minister LaBelle had written to all the ministers across Canada uh, for their um, feedback on uh, on, uh, on the new definition of the multifunction school activity bus, and what uh, and feel free to jump in anytime to get their feedback on that. So uh, this is what uh, we're waiting for. And of course, we don't know any of the what the national approach is or what they're doing with it. We're, we're just going to wait patiently, like we've been doing. Over is there a years. difference between a federal politician and a provincial one? Is there a difference? Yeah. Well, provincial is, takes care of their own provinces, mm -hmm. and the, the I'm talking federal, about actions. Move fast. <laughs> I would say the uh, the uh, Transport Canada um, they they. They went uh, beyond, beyond and above uh, what they uh, they did that we requested. Well, the federal them. government uh, has its own mandates and responsibility mm -hmm. to Canadians, and it is uh, a little bit different for what uh, the jurisdiction is for provincial and territorial governments. Uh, but I do believe most of the politicians that we have dealt with have been, as Isabel commented, they've been respectful of uh, our feelings and what we've been trying to do. It is a very long process. Uh, it, it, and a lot of people think you can just walk in there and demand something, and that is not way, the way the system works. You have to put in the time, you have to understand the acts and regulations, you have to do to educate yourself, and that's exactly what Isabel and I have done. We have done our homework. Oh yes, I know that for a fact. I know that for a fact. And so, do you want the federal government to ban these debt traps, uh, ban? Well, see, the federal government, they can't dictate to the provinces what they can and cannot do. Suggests? Um, no, they, they, can, they give directions. They can give directions, but uh, it's up to each province to do what suits their needs. So why talk to the federal government? Well, this is the the reason was because to do the testing on the 15 passenger vans and the multifunction activity buses, and they compared them when they did their static stability test, dynamic testing, and crashworthiness testing. Like you did in Michigan. No, that was a that was another issue. That was that about was a, the tires. The tires, okay, tires that's right. That's and right. the uh, all-season tires and combination tires. That was a different. The federal government, uh, Transport Canada, it, it is their responsibility uh, to do the uh, testing of vehicles and uh, for the uh, safety standards for the Canadian Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. Okay. So that is where that is determined, and then from there, that is set. And that has to be met by the manufacturers, and then the province and territories would follow that. But the actual to actually uh, implement a ban uh, that is not in the federal government's mandate, 
it is, as Isabel said, it is up to the uh, provinces and territories. They have the power. It is now in their hands. How come I get a feeling that uh, <clears throat> you girls are not going to go away? It's, it's not that we're not going to go away. We're there still. Uh, oh, I guess we're, we're there to uh, honor and our boys, Daniel and Michael, and, uh, and to save lives. Because we know what a 15 passenger van, after this, these testings, you know, um, every parent wants their child to travel safely. And um, we know after all the test review and the crash tests that 15 passenger vans, there are um, greater deaths and fatalities in 15 passenger vans. We are not, as, pe as some people have deemed us, some, not many, uh, we are not crazy. We are not, we're not... Um, Mentally challenged? No, 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 no. Uh, uh, it's, not, uh, it's not that we need to, uh, how can I say, uh, we're not accepting things. We know our sons are gone. We know we will never see them again. Oh, you'll see them again. But in that, on, on this earth. Hmm. But we both felt, we were compelled, and I believe it came from our boys, uh, two young, strong, outgoing, gregarious young men that could have given so much to Canada uh, were taken. And we do not want anybody else to go through what we've gone through and we don't want anybody else to die because of something that should have been corrected 40 years ago. Those vans were designed over 40 years ago to carry cargo on the floor. When the manufacturers decided to install seats and windows, they were never upgraded or redesigned to carry human beings. That's the bottom line, and people have to understand that. Our boys were human cargo. You know what? That was so well said to leave it at that. Thank you.